time we met Little Orvie, a huge Civil War cannon, which is now being used as a siege gun in the feud between the Hatfuls and the Floys. Little do the hateful Hatfuls know that there isn't a Floy within miles, for the only people in the house are Fearless Leader and our old nemesis, Boris Badenov, who has merely disguised himself as Felonious Floy. Or Devil Ben Hatful, as the case may be. But the two villains are unaware of the presence of Little Orvie. As Boris says, I don't want to pry, Fearless Leader, old superior baby boy, but how come I got to wear this thin fuzz and talk with Konpon accent? Because at last, Pennsylvania is close to having the ultimate weapon with which we can rule the world. Sounds yummy. What is it? I have here a special high-level, top-secret, confidential sketch of the ultimate weapon. Can you be trusted, Baranov? Can I be trusted? I swear it! Then uncross your fingers! <laughs> Force of habit, boss man. Very well. Here is the ultimate weapon. If it, that's a weapon? That's the weapon. But that's just a derby hat! Not just a derby hat, Baranov. This is the Kerwood Derby. <laughs> The Curver Derby? Quiet, you fool! The Curver Derby? You fool! And Fearless Leader told Boris the legend of the fabulous bowler. The Curwood Derby had first been owned by a cave dweller many eons ago who put it on and said... Pardon me, my dear. I've got something to do. Like what? I'm going to invent the wheel. And he did. Later on, it was owned by a man named Aristotle, who one day in his bath cried, Eureka! I have found it! You found Aristotle's law of displacement and specific gravity? No, you idiot. I found it so. The Kerwood Derby was won by Philip of Macedonia when he conquered the world, and by Genghis Khan when he conquered the world, and by Julius Caesar when he conquered the world, and by Elvis Presley when he... Oh, never mind. It disappeared for a time, but its last known owner was a Princeton College professor who put it on and said... Of course, E equals MC squared. Why didn't I think of that before? Yes, the Kerwood Derby turns anyone who wears it into the smartest man in the world. So if we get Derby... I wear it. And Pennsylvania outsmarts everybody in the world. Correct. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go get it. There's just one little hitch. Uh -oh. It takes somebody special to find the Kerwood Derby. That's me, boss man. Somebody with a built-in talent. That's me. He must be the stupidest bubblehead in the world. That's me, Dick. Who that? This is who that. But that's Moose, that idiotic Moose Boo Winkle. Right. He is the dumbest creature in the world, so he is the only one who can lead us to the Kerwood Derby. That means he's, he's worth millions to us. Billions? Where is he, bad enough? He's right in the cellar, fearless leader. Then who is that about to get his head blown off? Yes, right outside the window, Bullwinkle had poked his head out of the root cellar, right in front of the gaping muzzle of little Orby. If the most dies, our plan dies. How about that? And if the plan dies, Potsylvania dies. How about that? And if Potsylvania dies, you die. How about that? And Boris grabbed a club, leaned out of the window, and swung hard at Bullwinkle's head, just as little Orby went off with a roar. When the smoke cleared, nothing was to be seen of the house or the villains, or of our heroes either. Is this the end of everything? Nope, just this episode. Be with us next time for Bullwinkle Makes His Bid or Going, Going, Gun.